What was it like to be the son of a hero father? Once upon a time, the children of brave and honored parents could not think of resting on their father's laurels. The younger generation strove, at the very least, not to shame their heroic ancestors, and even to surpass them. Maybe that's why the Soviet Union was an example to many. Arkady Kamenin was by modern standards a golden boy. He was the son of Nikolai Kamenin, one of the first heroes of the Soviet Union. The family of the highly decorated aviator received an apartment in the famous Moscow house on the embankment, a summer cottage for holidays in the suburbs, an attached car. It would seem that a cloudless future is guaranteed. However, it was not that simple. The family followed the fighter pilot, who was often thrown to a new duty station. Under such conditions Arkashka preferred to waste time at the airfield and in the flying workshops, to be closer to his father. So, even after arriving in Moscow the son of the hero of the Soviet Union continued to live according to his usual schedule, school, father's airfield or aircraft workshops, home, preparation for school, help from mother, and rare communication with his father. Even his summer vacations were spent at his father's airfield, rather than at the dacha, which was his father's due to his position, rank and merits. Somehow the quick-tempered and quick-witted boy became more proficient in aircraft engines than any other professional mechanics. In the USSR such eagerness was appreciated, so the young motorist was even officially hired at an aircraft plant as a mechanic in early 1941. In the summer the Kamenin family moved to Central Asia, Tashkent as Nikolai Petrovich was assigned to command a separate aviation brigade of the Central Asian Military District. Then in 1942 my father was transferred to the front to command the Assault Aviation Corps. Theoretically his son should have been left away from the front as a minor, but he constantly pounded the doorsteps of all available organizations, proving that knowledge and skills make him an adult. Experienced aviation engine specialists were in short supply at the time, so Arkady and his mother were sent to his father. The boy was officially enlisted as a mechanic on special equipment of a communication squadron of the Aviation Corps headquarters. Arkasha's mother began working at the headquarters as a clerk. Already in 1943 the young mechanic moved to the cabin of reconnaissance, corn aircraft, flying with experienced pilots as a flight mechanic, navigator observer and in-flight gunner. At the request of the restless boy the pilot sometimes let him steer, the corn was duplicated in both seats during the flight. Then it was the turn of takeoff and landing. This is how Arkady gained practical skills of piloting. The legendary U-2 was used everywhere in the USSR as a training plane and was considered to be easy to learn. However its use as a reconnaissance plane required high skills, ability to fly in any weather and time of day and knowledge of non-standard maneuvers. Scouts, for example, practiced night flights across the front line in planning mode with the engine off. It allowed to keep secrecy of movement, but demanded high skill. The flight exam of the restless, Latunka, this is how his colleagues nicknamed the boy, was accepted personally by his father, but even he could not find any reason for a bad mark his son not only knew the U-2, from A to Z, he also flew better than other graduates of flying schools. In summer 1943 Arkady is already a fully flown pilot. Of course, they took care of the boy as best they could. His liaison, corn plane, was sent by routes, which were comparatively far from the front line. But anything can happen in the war. The plane was sometimes fired upon by enemy soldiers. Enemy machines flying overhead didn't miss a chance to hit the plane with a burst of machine gun fire. An enemy messer somehow purposefully dived onto the slow-moving U-2. The German pilot chased an easy, as he thought, target. However he did not take into account that not only speed and armament gave him an unquestionable advantage in the air fight. Arkasha skillfully evaded enemy attacks in a bend, so that the enemy failed to control and crashed into the ground. After such a baptism of fire, Ledunk was given the tasks behind the front line. Arkady knew his flying machine thoroughly and could fly noiselessly into the most difficult and inaccessible areas, delivering intelligence and ammunition to the partisans and subversive groups. Once, on his way back from one of his missions over the front line Arkasha saw a downed Soviet attack aircraft on the neutral ground. And from all indications the pilot didn't manage to leave the cockpit. The guy managed to land his corn plane literally right next to the downed Ilu. The warned gunners reliably cut off the enemy from our planes with a solid shaft of fire. At the same time Arkady managed to get into the cockpit of the attack aircraft, 
pull the wounded pilot out of there and drag him into his own plane. The bravery and ingenuity of the young pilot was awarded with the Order of the Red Star. The Hletnok received the second star for the reflection of nationalists' attack on the front headquarters. Bandera bands managed to infiltrate through the security perimeter and were about to secretly slaughter the headquarters workers. The bandits had miscalculated everything, but the unaccounted for factor was Arkady Kamenin with his corn cracker. In the uproar the young man managed to lift the plane in the air and call for help, throwing the nationalists with hand grenades from high up in the process. By the end of the war the teenager had more than 600 combat sorties and almost 300 hours in the air. The youngest military pilot walked in formation next to his comrades in arms at the victory parade, and he exchanged the cockpit for the school desk, catching up on his lost knowledge. Already in 1946 Arkady graduated from high school. He began to take preparatory courses at the Zhukov Air Force Academy, Sukovsky. At one time this educational institution was graduated by his father, Kamenin Nikolai Petrovich. He wanted very much for his son to follow in his footsteps and achieve recognition not only as a talented pilot, but also as a commander and officer. War does not let the soldiers go, even when the cannons stop firing. It is often the case that the deathly tension subsides and relaxation brings not rest but new misfortune. The strength, undermined by the daily strain, turns out to be quite unreasonable. People who have forbidden themselves to be ill for five long years of war become ill. A young man, who had reached his 18th birthday, suddenly felt a severe headache and drowsiness. And he never woke up. The youngest pilot of World War II remained forever young.